50 shipping to Ray Stevens P.O. Box 8250 Atlanta, Georgia 30306. That's 1-800-257-1257. This is CNN. President Bush joins other heads of state from the world's leading economic powers as they clear an obstacle blocking aid to Russia. And a captured fugitive who eluded authorities for weeks in the wilderness makes a cocky courtroom appearance. <laughs> A late update of the day's news. This is World News on CNN with David French in Washington and Andrea Arsenault at CNN Center in Atlanta. Thanks for being with us. The leaders of the seven principal industrialized nations have gathered in Germany for the beginning of their annual economic summit meeting tomorrow. President Bush was among the last of the G7 leaders to arrive. Delegations from France, Britain, Italy, Japan, Germany, and Canada are all preparing to deal with aid to former communist nations, a stagnating world economy, and the violence in the former Yugoslav republics. Earlier today, a breakthrough on loans to Russia. President Boris Yeltsin has reached a preliminary agreement on terms for the first part of a $24 billion Western aid package to support his economic reforms. That agreement could open the door for approval of the aid by the G7 leaders when they meet with Mr. Yeltsin on Wednesday. Also earlier, the president made a quick stop in Poland, where he offered financial support to a country still going through the birth pangs of creating a free market economy. Mr. Bush also offered some spiritual support. Here's CNN's Mary Tillotson. Polish President Lech Walesa said only the Pope has attracted such huge crowds as greeted President Bush in Warsaw's Castle Square. In return, Mr. Bush said Poland's economic progress should be rewarded by Poland's being allowed to use its $1 billion currency stabilization fund as seed money for new investments. Mr. Bush said the U.S. is ready to convert its $200 million contribution to the fund for that purpose. And he promised to lobby the other industrial nations in Munich this week to follow suit. America stands with you. America wants Poland to succeed and to prosper, and America wants Poland now and forever to be free. The U.S. proposal for converting the stabilization fund was welcome news to Valenza. Prosperity is the guarantor of peace, while economic crisis fosters social unrest. I believe that the Stabilization Fund could play an enormous role in bringing economic stability to the region. Just as Lech Walesa embodies Poland's fight for freedom in this generation, so did pianist and elder statesman Ignacy Jan Paderewski embody that same spirit earlier this century. President Bush came to Warsaw also to honor Paderewski. In a funeral mass at St. John's Basilica, Pantarevsky's body was reinterred. The pianist died at 80 in America in exile. He had said he did not want to be buried in Poland until it was free. Now, 51 years after his death, it is. And Ignacy Jan Paderewski came home. Mary Tillotson, CNN, Warsaw. In Southern California, another strong aftershock just a week after two earthquakes caused extensive damage in some areas. This time, no report of injuries or serious damage. Today's quake was centered about 32 miles north-northwest of Yucca Valley, one of the area's hardest hit last week. Seismologists say today's quake reached 5.5 on the Richter scale when it hit at 2.15 p.m. local time. Again, no injuries or serious damage are reported. An escaped convict who eluded authorities for seven weeks in the Arizona wilderness will be arraigned in the morning. Danny Ray Horning appeared in court today to hear some of the charges against him, including kidnapping, attempted murder, and armed robbery. Bail was set at $2 million, which is moot anyway, because he would immediately be returned to prison if he posted bond. Horning facetiously asked if he could have 24 hours on the street to come up with the money. He was just as cocky outside the courtroom. Anybody sure, about sure. this? Pulling us down a little bit here. 
cuts off the most attention I've ever had. Why? You tell me, you're here. Danny, did you ever think about the terror you put those people through? Well, there's uh, two that I took the station wagon from. I don't think it was terror. It's going to be on this part. Uh, the two females that I tied up, I think there was some terror there until they realized that I wasn't shooting. You feel bad about it all? Not at all. I didn't give up, man. <laughs> Warning was found this morning in Sedonia, Arizona, borrowed in the backyard of a homeowner. He ended up there after slipping past a dragnet in the Grand Canyon. He eventually fled following a police chase. Rebecca, Rebecca Aguilar reports Harning then tried to spend the night in Sedonia. As FBI agents and other law enforcement officers planned their next strategy to find Danny Horning in the wilderness near Flagstaff, it was around 2 this morning when they heard he had been caught. Yavapai Sheriff's deputy found Horning hiding under a gazebo at a home near Sedona. The only thing I could think of after all this was over is how close we came maybe to being hostages for this man. And that, that was very, very frightening. Very frightening. And they had him surrounded with guns at him, and they had gotten his gun, and then they had him move over to the deck and laid him on his stomach and then handcuffed, took his shoes off, searched him, handcuffed his feet and his, and his hands. Horning was found barefoot and tired and did not leave this arrest. Did you find a weapon? Yes, we did. We found a Ruger 44 Magnum. It was fully loaded and he had several extra rounds of ammunition on his person, but he did not attempt to use it when he was apprehended. Horning was brought back to the command post briefly so the tracking dogs could sniff him as their reward. The media was kept at a distance. And at the Coconino County Sheriff's Department, a smiling Horning said only a few words. How do you feel about your capture? Like Horning was then taken away to be booked on kidnapping and other charges. Horning's freedom is now gone. In Flagstaff, Arizona, Rebecca Aguilar for CNN. Just ahead on this edition of World News, a day for prayer as people in Sarajevo dash to churches even as gunfire rages nearby. At 17 past the hour, could the war on drugs bankrupt the federal court system? And at 54 minutes past, advertising in the Islamic world, it's a whole new ballgame. Now, because bigger businesses come in all sizes, AT&T is introducing the new Megacom family of services with choices to fit your needs just right. It's big news for businesses spending over $3,000 a month on outbound long distance. Try new Megacom Plus service on for size. Combine billing from all your locations for bigger savings. And you can get your bill on a PC disc to help you analyze your spending and control costs. New Megacom Optimum service may be more your size. It offers unparalleled customer support, including service guarantees, and is the one source to call on 24 hours a day for anything that affects your service. Call 1-800-858-MEGA, extension 12, to see how the new AT&T Megacom family of services fits you. Sign up by October 15th and get free installation. Call today. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes. But I discovered the five-minute hair coloring, the revolutionary discovery called Just for Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes, shampoo out. Gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me. And it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just for Men. A real sports coupe is more than fancy technology. It's the perfect balance between the needs of a driver and the needs of a curve. With a pure focused performance that makes even the same old road seem new. Because it's not the road you take, it's how you take the road. The all new 24 valve Ford Probe GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? Defense Secretary Dick Cheney is criticizing a Senate committee's efforts to obtain more information on Americans missing from the Vietnam War. 
The Senate voted Thursday to ask the White House to release secret documents on POWs and MIAs. The Senate panel has threatened to make public government documents it has obtained if the administration refuses the request. But Cheney said today that such a move would jeopardize his department's efforts to get a full accounting of Americans missing in action. There's absolutely nothing to be gained by providing information that does violence to our ongoing efforts to get a full accounting for our prisoners. If uh, we were to reveal everything that's in the files, we would in fact uh, burn some of our sources. We would make it impossible for us to continue to operate to try to get that full accounting just to satisfy the claims from the Senate. I would hope what the committee would do is look at all the information that's available. This is what they said they wanted to do when they started and then make a judgment and be willing to stand up and be counted and say, look, we've looked at the evidence and this is what it shows. Instead of, it looks as though they've been unable to come to any sort of consensus among themselves, so now their cry is, well, the administration's got to make everything public. And Cheney said the U.S. is ready to provide military air support for international relief flights into the former Yugoslav Republic of Bosnia-Herzegovina, but Cheney said the U.S. would not send in ground forces to end the violence in the region. This, as rocket fire, continued into the night in the capital, Sarajevo, but relief planes were able to bring in food and medicine today to the city's airport. CNN's Christian Amanpour reports on the tenuous lifeline to the embattled region. Sunday in Sarajevo, and the city's Christians head for church. But even this place is no sanctuary from the war around them. The crash of mortars has become so routine, these people barely flinch anymore. But as new victims fill the overcrowded hospitals, the citizens of Sarajevo are getting angry. They want to fight back. We are uh, people with uh, courage, but we don't have the uh, weapon to, to fight them uh, uh, again. You know? And all we need from United, from the, uh, from the other countries, to give us the weapon. But the other countries are only sending food and relief supplies. 500 tons so far, not nearly enough to feed the city's 300,000 people. At the marketplace, you can still see leaves on sale and perhaps a packet of coffee. You're almost nothing, nothing. So it's day by day like that and the whole thing is something will appear. But even the Sarajevo airlift is flying on a minute by minute schedule. It could be aborted if the airport takes a direct hit. As Canadian infantry troops dig in around the runway on the lookout for an enemy attack, General Satish Nambia arrived, head of all the UN forces in former Yugoslavia. Come to see my sector commander and the troops. That's what I'm here for. No, in fact, he's also here for talks with the warring sides because of renewed attacks near the airport Saturday. <laughs> Snipers let loose even as General Nambia visited his troops' defensive positions the fragile airport ceasefire may not hold. Obviously, uh, both sides are cheating on the, uh, on the centralization of equipment. There are some heavy weapons that have not been centralized under our observation. If the ceasefire fails, if the airport comes under heavy attack, this UN force doesn't have the numbers or the armor to defend against a full-scale offensive. And so far, the international community says there'll be no military intervention to stop this war. Christiana Wanpour, CNN, Sarajevo. The United Nations, our United Nations weapons inspectors, have mounted a vigil in a standoff with Iraqi authorities. The inspectors are spending the night in cars outside a government building in Baghdad after the Iraqis denied them access. The UN team is overseeing the destruction of Iraq's chemical weapons facilities. The Iraqis say the building houses the Ministry of Agriculture and Irrigation and claim it contains nothing that would interest the inspectors. To domestic politics now, he has not been tapped as the vice presidential nominee on the Democratic ticket, but Indiana Congressman Lee Hamilton is already laying out where he stands on the issues. Hamilton, reportedly a contender for the nomination, says he is solidly moderate. He disagrees with Bill Clinton's support for a law requiring employers to give workers time off for the birth of a child or family illness. And the 28-year House veteran says deciding whether to accept the second spot on the ticket, if offered, will be tough. It's not an easy decision for me. I have a heavy agenda in the House, heading up the reform efforts in the Congress, uh, taking over the chairmanship of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. My political life has been in the Congress. This would be quite a switch. But of course, uh, going into the vice presidency or a candidate for that uh, does open up uh, a lot of new avenues for me. Uh, but it's, not a, uh, it's a close call. 
Clinton spent the weekend at home in Little Rock considering potential running mates, of course, but he would not discuss Hamilton's comments today on the family leave issue. The two men met privately last week. A new report is raising questions about work Ross Perot had done in Bermuda in 1986. Time magazine says a construction crew working for Perot blew up part of a coral reef. Time says the workers did the blasting without asking for a permit because they figured it would be denied. Well, according to the magazine, Perot told Bermuda officials he knew nothing about damage to the reef. But a construction expert tells Time Perot watched workers drill the reef and fill it with a dynamite. And the reef was apparently blasted so Perot could park his yacht closer to his vacation home. Just ahead on World News, this famous New Jersey military post is about to be mustered out of the army, a victim of changing times. What will become of old Fort Dix? We'll have a report. The following contains important information for veterans, their spouses, and widows aged 50 to 75.